Blessed be, blessed be God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah, with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days, they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge but all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you, God. 
Today's psalm is Psalm 119, verses 97 through 104. We'll read the psalm responsively through the whole verse. Oh, how I love your law all the day long. It is in my mind. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my study. I restrain my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. The second reading is from St. Paul's second letter to Timothy. As for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry faithfully. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God 
nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a woman who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later, he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Just go to the side. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm going to begin with a quote um, from one of the resources I used this week when preparing. And the author is Francisco Garcia. As someone who has been an activist and organizer for many years, and has sought to ground this work prayerfully as a follower of Jesus. I absolutely love this parable. It speaks to the divinely rooted call to, just, to pursue justice, while also grounding it in the context of a living a faithful life. It urges us to resist the tendency to think about prayer in a simplified and unidirectional way, as merely words we offer to God in a transactional and hierarchical manner. In other words, the idea of praying to God the Father up in the sky. It also makes a clear, intimate, and inseparable connection, in my view, between prayer and justice. This parable invites preachers and all who would receive it to think of prayer as an active, dynamic, relational, and even mystical enterprise between us and God. End of quote. So, who loves this parable? I actually do too. Um, and maybe some of you do, and maybe some of you don't. And of course, you can tell by the quote I read, I want to talk about the parable in the context of faith, prayer, and justice. And also tie them together because that's what Jesus did. Now, I'm going to break that down by going into translation again. The first line, we're supposed to pray always or unceasingly in some other translations that you know. 
Okay, first of all, how many of you pray unceasingly? Some of you pray a lot. Some of you may pray less. But unceasingly is a hard amount to pursue in our days. Now, I'm not going to say more about that, but I'm going to talk about the word prayer that's in Greek. You know, often, before I talk about the Greek, often in the Episcopal Church, we have prayers we pray, whether it's collects, whether it is prayers um, during the service. We pray all the time. They're full of words. And in it, we are talking to God. However, the line in Greek, the word in Greek that is used, does not mean that at all. It actually means to argue, to contend, to disagree, even to bargain with God. How many of you do that? Probably not. We're not taught to do that, are we? However, this is a long-standing tradition in the Jewish tr- in general and in the rabbinic tradition. Think about Job. Think about the book of Job. What is he doing with God that entire book? Is he not arguing all the time? All the time. And I think that's one of the reasons why that book is in there. Because what did it show? He argued with God, and in the end, what happened? He was rewarded. I mean, after a whole lot of absolutely awful things happened in the middle. The next word I want to talk about is faith. Now, I've actually talked about this before, but not everyone is in church every week, obviously. And, but the Greek word itself does not mean belief in concepts. In other words, we think of, we believe in the creed, right? You know, I can switch using faith and belief, and we have two different words in English that says something to us. So to believe in the creed sometimes means to believe in all the words. Like we believe in all the concepts that are included in the creed. However, the word in Greek is something else entirely. It is very dynamic. It means if we're going to try to capture what it meant to the people speaking Greek, is trust, fidelity, or being faithful, being steadfast in one's relationship, and being in relationship. It is more dynamic. So knowing those two things, what the word means, I'm now going to talk a little bit about the gospel. When the disciples wanted to know how they should pray, Jesus said, pray always, but he meant debate with God always, bargain with God. And it's followed by a parable, which means he's using the parable to explain what he just said, and that's the parable that is often called the parable of the unjust judge. But it really isn't about the judge at all. It's about the woman. I think the parable should be called of the woman who persisted and got her way because that's what happened. She begged the judge, she debated, she didn't give up. And frankly, the words in Greek that talks about when the judge gives up and decides to give it to her Um, it, It says in English that he doesn't want her to come around anymore. You know what the Greek says? He doesn't want to get punched in the face. So this is an example 
of praying according to Jesus who spoke the parable. She's demanding justice. In this instance, it was for her. We are asked then to pray like her, never ending, never giving up, standing up for ourselves. And I would say for others also, think about any protesters you've ever known. If someone is convinced about a cause, do they ever give up? Never. It, it is unending. According to what Jesus' words say in this passage, which includes a parable and other lines, they are praying to God because they are standing up for justice. Now I want to bring us to the last lines of the gospel. Then, and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will, God, will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant, grant justice to them. And now, an odd line, and yet... When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Will he find faith on earth? So according to this, he's not talking about people sitting in pews on church on Sundays. He's talking about what happens to the prayers, the people who pray, who stand up for justice, it says they will be given faith. Constant prayer brings faith. Constant prayer about justice. Think about these lines, you know them. Thy kingdom come on earth as in heaven. What are we doing when we're asking for God's kingdom to come now? We want it now. We want justice now. We want the poor fed. We want, excuse me, the poor clothed, the uh, homeless given shelter, the hungry fed, the thirsty given drink. That reminds you probably of another parable he told. Will he find faith on earth that results from the kingdom coming by invoking God to bring these actions? One might say that according to this parable, at least, God doesn't care about what we believe in our heads. God cares about our demands for justice for everyone. Perhaps this is making you a little uncomfortable in the pews. I'm looking at faces. I'm looking at body language. So I'm thinking perhaps you're a little uncomfortable. I guarantee that even 2,000 years ago, this parable made people feel uncomfortable. Remember, Jesus is not talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, not the ones that were in the synagogues, not the ones that were in the temple. He was talking to the poor and those who stood up for the poor. They would love this parable. And again, what makes us uncomfortable is we are, we call ourselves the faithful, the faithful who are in the pews, don't we? We call ourselves faithful. And yes, many of you strive for to remove injustice. But again, according to the Gospel of Luke, that is the most 
important thing to do. Perhaps you say in your heads, I'm not going to argue with God. That is so almost against common Christian talk about prayer, the way we hear it. But I'm going to invite you, try once. Think about any injustice, racial, child abuse, injustice against women, injustice against the LGBTQ community. I don't care which one, any other one that I am not picking. If you get mad at it, demand justice from God. See what you might hear. I can guarantee he will not be mad at you for demanding justice for others. And then, who knows what God may invite you to do afterwards. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. Spirit and the Virgin Mary came in forsaken for his comforted pilot. prayers of the people. God, thank you for your creation, for the clear blue skies, for beautiful flowers, soaring trees, and quiet streams. God, thank you for the grandeur of creation for the rugged mountains, expansive oceans, and sun-soaked valleys. Your creation inspires us on our journey to greater generosity, O oh God. God, thank you for your abundance, for the rain that flows to your lakes and oceans, providing homes for the fish and water to the fields and orchards that provide sustenance to your people. Your abundance God, keep us mindful of our need to honor you through the wide stewardship of your creation. As you watch over us, 
Help us to help those less fortunate, the homeless, the sick, the children, the aged, the poor, all of whom have been displaced by the violence of nature or the violence of humanity. God, we ask for rain in places of drought and drying winds where floods have soaked the land. God, inspire the leaders of the nations to stem the tides of war, oppression, or greed. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Ukraine, Ethiopia, and any other war and torn world of the world, for people of Puerto Rico, Cuba, and Florida, who have suffered terrific damage from hurricanes. For Saul, Bod, Levit, Nancy, Janice, Elaine, Janet, Earl, Edwin Holder, Paula, Janice, Trudy, Mary. We pray for those traveling this week. Do we have travelers last week and the week to come? Kelly, me, anyone else? Bryn? Let's say the prayer for travelers. O God, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, Preserve those who travel, in particular all these gathered here and those who travel with them. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On our journey to greater generosity, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray for the committees of the month, which are stewardship and fundraising. We pray in this month of October, which is Breast Health Awareness Month, Italian American Heritage Month, Filipino American History Month, German American History Month. Please add your own petitions. And now for birthdays. Anyone celebrating birthdays either in the week past or the week to come? Any on Zoom? No? Well, then we'll move along to anniversaries. How about anniversaries last week or the week to come? No anniversaries, okay, we'll move along. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For the people who have died in all the mass shootings that continue weekly in the United States and the world, especially this week for those who have died in North Carolina. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Their 
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, God we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against, against, against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have, we have not, not loved you with our whole, with our whole heart. heart. We have, we not, have loved not loved our neighbors, neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. We are, we are truly, truly sorry, sorry and, and we humbly repent. repent. For the sake, For the sake of, of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be light in your will and walk in your ways to the, to the glory, glory of your name. name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, everyone.
So while, while most of the announcements, okay, most of the announcements we happen later in the service, I just want to talk about how we're giving communion out. Come on. Come on, you want to come up here? You going to help? No. Nope. <laughs> In any case, so first of all, we're back going around the altar rail. However, we're asking people to not kneel and to to stand in social distancing. You stand with your close friends, your family, etc., but otherwise leave a distance like we have in the pews. And we're continuing to offer communion in three ways. I, either just by me dropping the host in your hand, don't forget to leave your hands out flat. You may choose intinction or dipping, and that means I have to dip it in there. We're not, we're not, I can't have other, other people dipping right now, just trying to not spread anything. So if you want it dipped, point to the chalice. It's going to be the one that should be bef going before me. Or um, after a while, I've learned who wants it that way, and then I'll drop it um, also in your, hi, in your hand. And then thirdly, you may choose to drink from the chalice that will be following me, and because some people are comfortable drinking out of the chalice right now. Anyway, um, thank you. And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, Earth was created and shall be. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes 
to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. This is Lord be Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, I believe that you are truly the sacrament of this altar. What are the things? My heart. So we will. I pray you. the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road and may God's blessing, Christ's peace, and the Spirit's love be with you always. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for announcements. The first one, Nancy, are you here? Okay, if not, um, this is for youth. So youth, um, today at 1 p.m. there's a youth event and it's called Sundays, Sundays. And it, it's open to youth from across the diocese and gives them the two opportunity to meet, have fun, and enjoy the best part ice cream, which I agree with. Um, in any case, there's a link in here if anybody is interested in having their kids join, or if those of you who are right here, um, you can see that um, link. Confirmation, Kathy, do you want to speak? You have to come here so people can hear you, I'm sorry. We'll be starting a confirmation class um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's open to students in the eighth grade and up. It's also open to adults who would like to be received officially into the Episcopal Church or anybody who would like a refresher course or just come out and have fun and dinner with us or after, after lunch with us after church. So uh, just let me know if you have any questions or if you know anybody who might be interested. Thank you. Thank you. And even adults who might need to get confirmed, which happens yes. on occasion. Okay. Jarek, you're next. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm just here to talk about an event that's being hosted by the diocese, Living Room Conversations. And the goal of this Living Room Conversations is to train us and give us experience in having healthy conversations in difficult times. It's timed, the timing is not coincidental. We do know we have some challenging times um, now, both in church and our secular family and personal lives. This is a time that we'll be having a very crunch elections coming up in a few weeks with all that is happening in the world um, around us as we try to make sense of it with those we love and those that are close to us. Sometimes it can cause, it calls for difficult conversations. So this is some training for that. Even in our own church, you know, we have varying viewpoints on, on our common interests. We may have a common interest and a common goal, but we may have different viewpoints on how we get there. How do we have healthy conversations with each other in advancing our common purpose. So the diocese is really asking us to make an effort to have a team from the church. Registration is $25. I've signed up. I'll be happy if uh, a couple of people can join me so we can bring this work back to the church. It says 8.30 to 3, but I'm almost sure it's half a day. It's up to 12.30, not up to 3 o'clock. The registration is $25. It's in St. Michael's Wayne and that takes care of breakfast and lunch and other logistics. Um, if the payment of the registration is a challenge, you can speak to myself or Reverend Rose, can't they? Yes, yes they you may. Can speak to myself or Reverend Rose, but we would really like to have a team of volunteers go to this um, event so that we can follow up with it 
and bring it back, bring the work back to St. Andrew. Thank you. And Holy Family. Thank you. I mean, there is, if you look in the bulletin or in the email blast, there's a, a lot of other different um, types of um, uh, meetings and educational opportunities from the um, diocese. Please look them over. I will mention October 20th through November 13th, Nathan Darrow is performing in Shakespeare's King Richard II, and it's taking place at the Luna Stage in West Orange. There's a link to the um, to a, a site to purchase tickets. We're still looking for people to help out with finances, and I think that is it, except for what we are doing next. So I, this is very different. Um, so what we're going to do is have a procession going out through the door in the back of the church over there on your left um, so we can walk out onto the grassy area of the South Orange side. So it will have the procession as we usually have it and Joshua I think is carrying the, um, do you know that Joshua? You're carrying the ashes out there. Um, and follow me, who I'm the last person in the regular procession, follow me out. We're singing this little light of line as we're going out there. Bring your bulletins, because what we're doing is all in um, the bulletin. Okay? Oh, excuse me. Um, okay, no, just, <laughs> just a short now. Hello. Good morning, guys and gals. Uh, I just want to mention that Joshua Campbell Boucher, this is his first Sunday with us at Akali. He just joined the Corps. We're very happy to have him. Just want to make sure that you know he's the latest addition. So this is first day. Thank you. Oh, that is 
says the Lord, show, so shall your descendants and your name remain. Everyone? As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the soul and bread to the eater. So my mouth goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what for that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. As the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. <laughs> As a fallen for me in pleasant places, I have a goodly heritage. Let us pray. God, our creator, at the dawn of creation, you placed your children in a garden to find delight in their work and worship. Be present with us as we walk in and around this garden and open our eyes to the beauty of your creation. Jesus, our companion, on many occasions, you withdrew with your friends to the You withdrew with your friends to the garden for quiet and refreshment. Renew them in their stillness before you. Jesus, our Redeemer, you suffered anguish and betrayal in a garden, and there you submitted to your Father's will. Be present with all who come in sorrow and pain to this place, and give them the grace of knowing your redeeming love. Jesus, our Savior, after your crucifixion, there you first revealed yourself to your friends after you rose from the de dead. Be present with all who come to this place when all seems lost 
and awaken them to new life by your resurrection power. Holy Spirit of truth and power, our advocate and friend, present with all who come to this place seeking correction and strength, fill their hearts with the love of God, and send them out to be witness to Jesus. So I'm going to walk up to the cross, and I'm going to ask all the members of the Memorial Garden Committee to read the next line. That's there. We present to you this cross made by Duran Van Doren to be set apart for the service of Christ's Holy Church. Almighty God, we thank you that you have put it into the hearts of your people to make offerings for your service and have been pleased to accept their gifts. Be with us now as we, and bless us as we set apart this cross to your praise and glory and honor at Faith Gideon Brown through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now. Oh God, whose blessed son was laid in his sepulcher in the garden. Bless we this ground and grant that those whose ashes will be buried here may dwell with Christ in paradise and may come to your heavenly kingdom through your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now dedicate this memorial garden to the glory of God and the memory of all whose lives are honored here in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We remember the following people who have previously been sprinkled on another part of our property. Helen, Holcomb, Thompson, Susan, Roe, Neil, James, Edwin, Neil, Lee, Chamberlain. Amen. We remember Faith's parents whose ashes were in the trunk of her car when it was stolen. Who are remembered here, each with a marker on either side of the face. Marie, Horace Gideon, and Winfred S. Gideon III. Amen. Joshua, I need you to come forward, please. Can someone come here and hold this? Okay, we need someone strong, maybe. Everyone, the father, come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy and in your right hand pleasures forevermore. Jared, if you want to go in near the undercroft, uh, Edna, um, Emma put her shovel. It's, it's it's in the it's by the fire door as you go exit out of the undercroft. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister faith and we commit her ashes to the ground earth 
to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Yeah. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing.